and welcome to VM Cloud and Service Providers How To Videos. My name is Irina Lesser and I'm Inside Solutions Architect Cloud at VM Software. In this episode, we will configure VM Self Service Backup Portal. And let's jump straight to the topic. Veeam Self Service Backup Portal is a web tool based on Enterprise Manager component of Veeam Backup and Replication. It allows the service provider to delegate backup and restore operations to the end user. All operations are performed through the web interface, so there is no need to install any Veeam component on the end user machine. If you are not sure how to install or configure Enterprise Manager, please refer to corresponding how-to video. In this section, we will consider two scenarios depending on the underlying infrastructure, whether it's a VMware vSphere environment managed by vCenter or this is a VMware Cloud Directory infrastructure. And let's start with the first one. For vSphere user delegation, Enterprise Manager offers the concept of delegation mode based on one of three criteria, vSphere tags. And in this case, the user will be able to see and manage data protection operations for virtual machines with the specific tags defined by the service provider. The other two alternatives is either to select a user that has certain vSphere role or a certain vSphere permission to interact with VMs available to it. As you can see, two types of the users are supported. Globally, it's internal and external type, but it can be either a user or a group. Internal user should be a member of the domain as you cannot create a tenant using the local user account. Talking about the external user, if you use single sign-on and you would like to extend this functionality to Enterprise Manager, please ensure that the identity provider you are using supports SAML 2.0 protocol. In case external user type or external group type is used, please be aware that the delegation mode available to this type of the user is only vSphere tags. Let's continue with VMware Cloud Director delegation. In this scenario, VM Backup Enterprise Manager uses the native authentication mechanism against Cloud Director infrastructure, no matter what Cloud Director infrastructure uses underneath. The obvious advantage of this scenario is that tenant is configured only once and it is already configured in the vCloud Director environment. So this tenant can use his credentials to access Enterprise Manager and once logged in, he will be automatically scoped with the resources of his organization. The role of such a user should be vCloud Director Organization Administrator. Once the tenant is configured, a tenant depending on the type, whether it's a vSphere user or a vCloud Director, will get access to Enterprise Manager through one of the links you can see on the screen. Uh, for the vSphere user, it will be backup, and for the vCloud uh, director tenant will be slash organization name. The tenant, once created, will be able to create and manage backup jobs that process uh, virtual machines, resource pool, vapps, uh, view statistics and space usage of the backup repository, and restore virtual machines, vapps, or guest operating system files. As of version 11a, the following configurations are supported. The Enterprise Manager, on top of which we have self-service backup portal, can be connected to one Veeam Backup Replication server with one or more vCenter or vCloud Director. And another configuration is multiple Veeam Backup and Replication servers that are connected to multiple vCloud Directors or multiple vCenters, and everything is managed by Enterprise Manager and self-service backup portal can be configured as well. Before we jump to the demo, let's go through the short checklist, what we need to have prepared before we continue with configuration of the self-service backup portal. So on the side of the backup server, we need to make sure we uh, have connected virtual center or vCloud directory and we're able to see uh, these servers in our backup infrastructure. Uh, we added a repository, which will be afterwards used by our tenant to store the backups. And finally, 
we need a template job. This one we need to configure to assign to one of our tenants. The settings defined by the service provider in this template job will be used in the jobs created by the tenant. In some cases, it makes sense to have multiple templates or even one template per tenant, since any change in the template job will affect the tenants that are using it. We will talk a little bit more about templates job and what settings are inherited by the tenants from this template job during the live demo. These are the steps we are going to take uh, when uh, we configure Enterprise Manager. First of all, we need to make sure that Veeam Backup Server is connected and that we can see it in the Enterprise Manager infrastructure. And then we will, according to our shortlist, we will add a user or an organization and then assign a template and repository quota to it. Now let's switch to the demo. Now let's proceed to the configuration of Veeam Self-Service Backup Portal. And according to our checklist, first of all, let's check the backup replication server. We are going to see that vCenter and vCloud Director are both added to Veeam backup infrastructure. We will also check that the repository is configured or we will create another repository right here. I already have three repositories configured, so I will allocate the space to the tenants based on one of those repositories. And the last thing to check is that we have created a template job for our self-service. I have two of them. This first one is based on uh, vSphere, so this will be a template job for vSphere user. And I also have another one. It will be the template job for vCloud director user. Now let's switch to the Enterprise Manager and configure our tenants. I'm going to log into the Enterprise Manager as a backup infrastructure administrator at service provider. I have all the data available to me, all the jobs from all the backup servers and statistics here. I have to switch to configuration and first of all, I will check that the backup server is connected and I can see this in the Enterprise Manager infrastructure. We will need the self-service menu and we also have here two tabs based on the user we're going to configure. We will start with the configuration of the vSphere user. First of all, I will use the delegation mode based on vSphere role admin, which is fine. I will not change it as uh, the users that are already configured may lose the access to the enterprise manager. I will add another user. Here in the drop down menu, you can see several type of uh, users as uh, was mentioned in the uh, presentation. I will select an individual user and type his account here. The next step, I will select the repository. I have two of them configured and I will select the repository to allocate space quota on top of this backup repository. The quota I allocate to my user will be 100 gigabytes. Also, I would like to draw your attention to this little checkbox, assign separate quota to each group member. In case the type of the user is a group, then you can select this checkbox and 100 gigabytes will go to each group member of the group. Here, the service provider can define what scheduling options will be available to the tenant. Job priorities, the center scope, and also we can take a look at the advanced job settings. These job, job settings cannot be changed by the tenant and they are only defined by the service providers. You can see here that these uh, settings are copied from the default setting, which is the default behavior. Otherwise, you can switch to the template job that you created for the tenant and you can then assign it to 
uh, for the settings to take effect. So here we will use the settings of this template job that I created manually. We'll see apply. Hopefully something uh, changed here. Maybe the day of synthetic backups or deduplication or compression settings. I will hit create and our user with 100 gigabytes of repository quota should be created. We can see this here and now let's try to log in as this user and see what are our possibilities. The username should be provided in the uh, domain username format. I will pick uh, this user as an individual user as he also is the member of domain user's account. Nothing is configured uh, on uh, the side of the user, so there are no jobs, no virtual machines. The only thing I can see that uh, the tenant has 100 gigabytes of quota. And uh, to start, uh, we can try and create the job. On behalf of the tenant, let's call it test one, two, three. We can specify the uh, number of restore points to keep and see what are the virtual machines available to this user. So we can go down and I only have three VMs available to me. So let's select uh, all of them. And add them to the backup job. I will not stop in details uh, on the settings, guest processing. Uh, the job schedule, you can see that I have full access to the job schedule as uh, defined uh, by service providers, email notifications in case of success or a warning, finish. So the job is uh, being created and after it is created, we can either uh, start it and also we have some actions available like edit, active full, perform active full disable or delete the job. When it comes to the restore operations, you have a uh, possibility to restore the entire virtual machine or guest operating system files by picking the virtual machine from the list. I don't have any backups, so... Uh, or typing the name of the file for, for the search. That's it on the side of uh, vSphere uh, user account and uh, uh, self-service backup portal delegation and uh, let's uh, switch back and continue to the creation of vCloud tenant. Once you switch to vCloud uh, tab uh, and the first time you log in, the only thing you are going to see in the organization is this type of organization, which is other vCloud and the self-service backup portal is disabled by default. So to be able to uh, grant access to the uh, tenant, you will need to add this uh, organization here explicitly. And we will click add. Also, uh, we select the uh, organization that uh, we're going to grant access to the uh, self-service backup portal. Select the repository on top of which uh, this uh, vCloud director tenant uh, will uh, have the quota and also create a, a repository friendly name which will be available to the tenant. What is 100 uh, gigs? The same scheduling options uh, that we have just seen in the creation of vSphere user and uh, job priority. In the advanced job settings, we can either 
inherit the job settings from the default job settings or uh, from the template that I have created myself for vCloud Director users. When I hit apply, I will see the uh, all the settings that uh, cannot be changed by the tenant, defined by the service provider, and that will be used for the jobs uh, that tenant create. Save. We have created the tenant and we can see the quota allocated to him. So this is the more or less the uh, uh, same view that uh, we have seen. And let's also try to log in as the org admin of this KBBL organization. I'm checking that this is the uh, correct link for vCloud director logs in. And uh, the username is admin account for this organization. Sign in. And what we're going to see here is that some of the uh, uh, jobs and uh, jobs are created and virtual machines are protected. And let me switch back for a second to Enterprise Manager. Perhaps you are wondering why do we have the same organization mentioned multiple times here? Uh, the reason for this is in that in this way, we allocate more than one repository to such a tenant. That's why we have a couple of times mentioned both of these organizations. I would like also to say that uh, this functionality is only av available to the vCloud uh, tenant type and cannot be set up for the vSphere user. vSphere user can still only have one backup repository. So back, back, up, back to self-service uh, backup portal for the vCloud uh, director. Let's go and also try to create a job and let's give it a job name and see what virtual machines are available to this tenant. I'm selecting the repository and I have since I have more than one I can uh, select one of the available repositories virtual machines and uh, now I should be only scoped to the resources of my organization I can see the V apps and uh, let's um, select a couple of uh, V apps to add to the backup job we will not stop at these uh, steps as well. Finish. And the job will be created in a second. To make sure that uh, these jobs that are created by the tenant are created and executed in the Beam Backup or Application server, let's check the Beam Backup or Application Jobs tab and see what do we have here. So first of all, we have this test one, two, three job that was created by the vSphere user. And also I have the job that I just created for the cloud director user. You can see that these are different types and uh, the naming convention in Beam Backup uh, and Replication Server will be the following. Even though the tenant creates uh, the job with the name test one, two, three, uh, we will add the uh, tenant name in front of this job so that the backup administrator um, could easily identify that this job is created through self-service backup portal by the tenant. So in case of vSphere user, it will be a domain uh, slash account and for the cloud director user, it will be organization, uh, organization name and the uh, name of the job afterwards. And this is it about self-service backup portal configuration. Thank you for joining our how-to video series.